Hey guys, I'm Suj. I'm gonna start with Arche Bacteria. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel and hit thumbs up. So what are Arche Bacteria? They are a group of bacteria which belong to the domain Archaea. Only there are three domains, domain Eukarya, domain Archaea and domain Bacteria. And this was discovered by Carl R. Roos, the domain system. And he was the same person who also discovered Arche Bacteria. Carl R. Boos. These archaebacteria are also called as extremophiles because they live in extreme conditions. Extremo meaning extreme. Philos is loving. These were the first organisms on earth and hence they are called as living fossils. These archaebacteria were formed in the eon called Archean Eon and hence they are also called as archaeons. The word archaea refers to ancient and bacteria that means they are prokaryotes. Archaea were the primitive bacteria on earth found in Archean Eon that means 3.8 billion years ago. They can survive in extreme conditions like they are found in volcanic vents, sulfur springs, hot springs and deep oceans. Also they can live in absence of oxygen or less amount of oxygen. They are also known as living fossils because they represent the earliest forms of life on earth. And they don't die, instead they lyse. Lysis occurs, that means the membrane is ruptured. These archaebacteria can live in high temperature and low pH, more than 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degree Fahrenheit. They are very different from other bacteria. They are microscopic, unicellular, non-cellulosic, simple and primitive. The reproduction is asexual reproduction that may be by binary fission, fragmentation or budding. The plasma membrane is made up of a single layer of branched chain of lipids. They are different from other bacteria I mentioned earlier also. The cell wall is composed of different polysaccharides and proteins with no peptidoglycan. But their cell wall is made up of polysaccharide pseudomurin, that means false murin. The presence of 16S rRNA makes them unique and helps in placing them in separate domain called archaea. Just like bacteria, these archaea are also divided into two types, gram-positive and gram-negative archaea. Gram-positive archaea, they have a cell wall with pseudomurine and other complex carbohydrates. But these gram-negative archaea have no cell wall. There is no cell wall at all and no outer membrane is there. But they have a thick protein and glycoprotein coat covered. Commonly there are four major groups of archaea, methanogens, halophiles, thermophiles and psychrophiles. Methanogens make methane. Methanogens are the archaeons that produce methane as metabolic byproduct in anoxic conditions. These are commonly found in wetlands, digestive tract of animals such as ruminants and humans. These are responsible for methane content of bleaching in ruminants. Methanogens are the largest group of archaea and these are strict anaerobics. They form methane from carbon dioxide and other compounds like methanol, formate and acetate etc. These methanogens are commonly used in biogas reactors and biogas plants. Methanogenic archaea populations play an indispensable role in anaerobic wastewater treatments also. These are found in variety of anaerobic environments and environments rich in organic matter. Methanogens causes cows to belch. Common examples are Methanobacterium ruminatum, Methanothrix and Methanospirillum. Halophiles, these are salt-loving archaebacteria. They require high salt concentration or the NaCl concentration. They maximum require 1.5 moles and optimum 3 to 4 moles of NaCl. They are primarily aerobic organisms. They have carotenoids which gives reddish color for them. These extreme halophiles live in solar saltons, marshy lagoons, salt mines and hyperalkaline lakes and rivers.
bacteriorhodopsins capture light for energy in anaerobic respiration and helps them to synthesize ATP. Examples are Halobacterium salinarum, Salinibacter ruber, and Haloferax. Thermophiles, these are the group of archaebacteria which live in acidic and heat conditions. They are either called as thermophiles or thermoacidophiles also. Because they are obligate thermophilic and they can be acidophilic also. These extreme thermophiles live in hot springs, volcanic areas and in deep sea hydrothermal vents. These thermoacidophiles live in extreme heat conditions more than 100 degrees Celsius also. You can see these thermophiles in hot springs of Yellowstone National Park in USA. These thermoacidophiles are abundantly found in hot springs of Yellowstone National Park. Some of the examples are Thermococcus littoralis, Thermoplasm, Thermus aquaticus, Thermoproteus tenax, and Thermococci and Sulfobolus. A thermophilic archaea called as Thermus aquaticus is commonly used in PCR technique, which is used to produce an enzyme called as TAC polymerase enzyme. Psychrophiles Psychrophiles are the cold loving archaeons. These are the extremophiles that are capable of growing and reproducing in very low temperatures. They live at temperature below 25 degrees Celsius or it can be 0 degree Celsius to minus 5 degree Celsius also. They are found in places that are permanently cold. These psychrophiles live in polar regions, deep seas and in ice caps. One of the example is Psychrobacter arcticus. These were first isolated from Siberian permafrost. Phylums under Archaebacteria. Commonly there are five phylums that are Eurearchaeota, Quenarchaeota, Corarchaeota, Thaumarchaeota and Nanoarchaeota. Eurearchaeota is the most studied phylum and mostly includes methanogens and halophiles. Quenarchaeota consists of hyperthermophiles and thermoacidophiles that are found in marine environments. Corarchaeota consists of the thermophiles that live in hot springs, volcanoes and hydrothermal vents. Thaumarchaeota consists of ammonia oxidizing archaea as well as those with unknown energy metabolism. One of the examples is Candidatus nitrosoarchaeum. Nanoarchaeota. It consists of the obligate symbionts. They have a genus called as Ignicoccus and there is a single representative member in this group that is Nanoarchaeum equitans. So guys, this is the detailed explanation on Archaebacteria. So thank you for watching the video. If you have any doubts or any questions, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you.